What do you mean when you say that our fantasies reveal unmet needs or wounds? What, is, what does that mean? And maybe what are some examples you've seen? Yeah, just over and over again, I, the, the fantasy life was, was anybody who uh, has a addiction or compulsion with pornography, the fantasy life is the most guarded part of the whole thing because it contains the shame it, it it's it's the it's the thing that's wrapped in most shame mm -hmm. and so early on i didn't venture into that it felt like a violation of privacy but you know just through a series of experiences uh, of seeing those connections i began to realize that this is really the critical part of the healing process and um it's almost always something in the fantasy is fantasizing not only about needs that haven't been met, but also about deep wounds of the heart. And it's, it's, it's the light that shines that, you know, and so rather than hide that in shame, if we can open that up to the, to the gaze of, of the Holy Spirit, the gaze of Jesus, um, there can be tremendous healing. So to give you an example. Uh, there are lots of different kinds of pornography, uh, you know, lots of different things that people look at, things that people hunger for. And so uh, even the basic distinction between heterosexual and homosexual pornography, you know, people who are looking at pornography and looking at, say, a man looking at a woman versus a man looking at a man. And sometimes when a man is looking at a man, it's not even a homosexual fantasy. It may be an area of inadequacy that he's experiencing. And so he's focused on the man in, in this, you know, like if it's an internet pornography, in a sexual act. And usually what he's looking at is the very place that he's rejected in himself. Or what is, if it's... What, is, what does that mean? Let, let's just say there's a part of his body, uh, like... Maybe he has a, a very uh, small body mm -hmm. and he looks at this man who has a bigger body or a muscular body. And so he's fantasizing about being that man with a woman. Uh, and, and the fantasy never meets the need. Fantasy never meets the need. Yeah, it's a fantasy. It's not real. So he never gets affirmation of his self-rejection in his body by looking at pornography. Uh, or let's say another scene where a woman in, the, in this image has this great sense of delight and pleasure in the man and, and welcomes and receives him. Well, what, what is that revealing? It's revealing a rejection wound. I see. Right. Uh, and, and the sense of not being wanted, not being delighted in, you know, by whoever that was, whether it was past girlfriends or women in general or mother or, you know, father even. And mm -hmm. having, having that sense of being delighted in, the fantasy of that never meets the need. It's, it's a fantasy need. It's, it's not a real met need uh it's you know unconsciously at least the person knows that this woman really doesn't care about me she's an actress you know and, and in fact she's she's prostituting herself and so it'd be like having a relationship with a prostitute who all of a sudden uh gives the man everything he wants and at the end says give me the money and looks at him with disdain mm -hmm. you know that that's really what's happening in the pornography you know the the actresses and the actors look like they're having a lot of fun and a lot of pleasure but in reality it's a miserable experience for them after whatever the sexual compulsion is and so it's fantasy to think that this woman who's acting like she desires this man is really desiring the person who's looking at pornography and yet because of the unmet needs and the fantasy and whatever happens in the heart hungering for that it, it ex the experience is well this is meeting my needs this is what i've been longing for and then all of a sudden the letdown you know the emptiness uh, another example would be with uh you know some of the more uh violent sexual acts i've, I've worked with people 
over the years where, uh, you know, what really turns them on is, is something physically violent. And, you know, we may look at that on the surface and judge it and say, you know, that, that's bizarre. But uh, always I find it to be a clue to something in that person's heart. Either they've experienced violence in their life, and this is a way of reenacting that or reconnecting that, or they have uh, had some kind of violent sexual experiences uh, that they're trying to reconnect with, or, uh, you know, like the, the Fifty Shades of Grey kind of pornography, you know, where uh, it's, it's, it's just a very distorted kind of submission and being wanted and being controlled. And again, why would anybody want that? Uh, it's because of unhealed wounds and unmet needs. Mm. And then a lot of times when people are looking at pornography uh, in any kind of rape or violent kind of situation, it's usually reliving uh, like for women, it would be reliving being the victim of that. Uh, for men, it can be too. But sometimes it's also trying to get control over a helpless place, uh, an experience of being helpless. Mm. 